Welcome. So we are doing something different today. Uh, I announced it on Tuesday, so a bit of a change up in the schedule. And what's on schedule today is a survey of AMO physics, or atomic, molecular, and optical physics. And I guess the reason for me doing this is, um, so physics 4C, at this point at physics 4C is where you are, uh, um, you are at a point where you actually have a perspective on what areas of physics um, that people are doing active research in are. Um, this is something that you can't really do in physics 4A or 4B because you don't, you know, you don't know the classical physics. <laughs> you don't know the established areas of physics. And with the special relativity and quantum mechanics, we are now approaching the frontiers. So we can now uh, talk about, well, what's out there? What are people still trying to discover? So, um, so I thought we would uh, just, uh, um, I would give a you know, short 50 minute or shorter presentation on uh, kind of physics research people do. And I guess I don't really tell my story much anymore, but my own area of physics is AMO physics. That's why I'm titling it AMO physics survey because that's what I used to do research when I was a graduate student. But I will talk about other areas also, just uh, briefly, just you know, not as much in depth because I don't know it as much. So um, this is the Berkeley Physics website. Um, I mean, you can use the website of almost any research university. I use this one because I know the people there better. Um, oh, and uh, they ha are holding Cal Day this Saturday, and um, whether you are going to Berkeley or not, it's a good opportunity to um, kind of see what kind of people, what kind of things people do at a research university. Uh, it's open house, many departments have different kind of events scheduled. It's, uh, I mean, it's mainly for people who got acceptance letter to Berkeley. They want people to come, look at all the stuff, and actually you know, ex accept the acceptance letter. But <laughs> whether you accept it there or not, it's a uh, fun event. Um, so I think MESA is actually scheduling a trip. If you want to join their group, you can, but you can also go on your own. It's like you don't need a ticket or anything. You just, I don't know, take a bar to there and walk around. Uh, I, on Calde, I usually actually try to stay out of Berkeley because it's, it's like with any big event, it's terrible for people who actually live there. Right? <laughs> so anyways, so um, under research and faculty, so these are kind of a broad outlines of areas of research that people do. Um, I mean, some, well, some of them are not exactly physics proper, astrophysics, that's obviously astronomy. But astronomy is very closely aligned with the physics, especially at undergraduate level, if any of you are interested in studying astronomy, what you should have been doing is preparing like a physics transfer student. Then you'd be ready to, when you transfer, you'd be ready to take all the astrophysics classes and you know, start learning the stuff you want. Um, so astrophysics, you could consider that a branch of physics if you want. Um, I'll just leave it there. We'll go more depth into AMO physics or atomic, molecular, and optical physics. And um, so at parties, when people ask me, what do you do? My one sentence description of what I do used to be, I work with the lasers. And that is, a, that is a good one sentence description of what you do in AM or atomic, molecular, and optical physics. Because when you tell people you do, work with atomic physics, uh, people get a wrong impression. They think of atomic bomb, which is more of a nuclear physics, not atomic physics. <laughs> so telling people I work with the lasers actually gives a better one sentence description of what you do in AM or physics. Um, biophysics is, I guess that's uh, more universities are doing that. This is, you know, clearly not physics proper, but what this represents is the amazing advance in technology that's been made in the last, uh, I don't know, two, three decades, where the methods of, of physics become applicable to complicated systems like biological systems. Um, a lot of biophysics involves, I think, a statistical mechanics, which is a part of the level. It's the upper division version of thermodynamics. Um, so I want uh, condensed matter physics um, and materials science. I guess that's more of the engineering version of that. Uh, materials science is, I think, actual field of engineering. Uh, condensed matter physics deals with, um, well, condensed matter 
or liquids and solids. Um, the other name this goes by is the solid state physics. And I guess this is the distinction. When we look at atomic physics, you will see that a lot of the state of matter you are dealing with are gas, like atomic vapor. Um, later on, for the lab, I'm going to bring out mercury vapor lamp, and that light is being produced by mercury vapor. And there's a reason for that. When you are dealing with atomic physics, um, you kind of want to deal with the atoms in isolation, and uh, so gas is a close approximation of that. Uh, once you start dealing with the liquids and solids, things get complicated. The atoms are constantly interacting with each other. So when you look at this, uh, this crystal here, uh, they emerge from aggregation of strongly interacting constituents. And what that means is liquids and solids. They are strongly interacting with each other. That's why, why, that's why they are condensed. And I will tell you that condensed matter physics is probably the most practical area of all these different areas of physics. Uh, this goes into, I mean, you can kind of see from material science, it's more directly related to the engineering. And from this, you go into semiconductors, um, like you know, you have terabyte hard drives. It uh, comes out of research in condensed matter physics involving giant magneto resistance. Um, so this is the most practical area of physics. It's also most complicated. Um, oh, sorry, one second. I think I forgot to do something with my microphone. Uh, forgot to put it on airplane mode. All right. Um, so now. When people think about um, cutting edge of physics, what they usually think about is particle and nuclear physics. So um, I mean, the aspiring, uh, someone who wants to get Nobel Prize in physics, usually the number one area they would think of is particle and nuclear physics, um, like atomic bomb, well, atomic bombs in the 50s, 40s. 30s, 40s, and 50s, and um, these days, particle accelerators, um, like a lot of the science fiction stuff, like, uh, I don't know, Dr. Manhattan in Watchmen, um, it's uh, inspired by particle accelerators in particle physics. And um, really, particle physics is where people are trying to discover new laws of physics, physics that we don't know yet. Um, uh, the other areas of physics are more of an application of laws that we already know. Uh, in condensed matter physics, you heard of, saw the phrase emerging phenomena. Um, that is kind of describing, we already know the older laws of interaction, but when you put all those complicated things together, sometimes you get a, a result that you weren't expecting, that's uh, surprising. That's what condensed matter physics does. In atomic physics, um, um, we really don't expect to discover anything new. <laughs> we kind of go in with the assumption that laws of physics as we know are, are pretty good, and we keep trying to test how good are they. Um, and particle physics is where you could say that the stated goal is to try to find the new laws of physics. When you, uh, let's see, aims to, well, aims to answer fundamental questions of, and one of the ways to answering it is, you know, find um, kind of, um, in trying to pursue the questions that has come up, uh, many of the solutions that proposed by particle physics theorists are, um, are that you know, the laws as we know are not complete. There is something beyond what we know. And that's what they um, try to do. And um, so I guess for those of you who are interested in research, I encourage you to look at these pages. And as you do, you will find this um, common feature. All these pages divided between theorists and experimentalists. That's true here, particle physics. That's the biggest page. It's true here, condensed matter physics. There's um, theorists and experimentalists. Uh, UC Berkeley actually has a pretty uh, big uh, condensed matter physics uh, de de um, department. Um, so that's why you see so many experimentalists. And um, I guess uh, I'm not really talking about these two. Um, because this is not really a big area of research, as you can see when you go to the page. <laughs> um, any decent sized research university would have AMO physics, condensed matter physics, and particle physics. If it's missing any one of those big three, then you know, it's not properly sized <laughs> research university. Um, but the other areas are kind of, it depends. Um, emeritus, those are obviously retired people. <laughs> um, so, 
so as you look at these areas, you will see that all these pages uh, divided between theorists and experimentalists. And I think that's a kind of a thing you see more in physics than uh, chemistry or biology. I don't think there are that many theoretical biologists. <laughs> Maybe that's a thing now, I don't know. Uh, although I think in biophysics, you might have a theoretist. So, um, oh yeah, you do have a theorist. <laughs> so, uh, this is a question that I used to ask when I was an undergrad, like um, what is the difference between experimentalist and theorist? And that difference will really depend a lot on the specific field. For example, in particle physics, the kind of track you would go on as a theorist and the kind of track you would go on as an experimentalist, it's very different. It's, um, um, it's very different. The kind of classes you take are different. Kind of research projects you do are different. And uh, where I felt the distinction was more blurred was in condensed matter physics. And when I asked, this is the answer I got um, of the difference between experimentalist and theorist. And who was the person that gave me this answer? I don't really remember. Um, so the answer I got was this, that theorists don't do experiment. <laughs> and you know, in name of physics, I, so the group I was in, so I consider myself an experimentalist. So take whatever I say with a grain of salt. Uh, he was my advisor in uh, graduate school. Um, so, so if you are an experimentalist, that doesn't mean you can forego understanding the, the theories that your experiments are based on. So you still have to understand the theories. But um, my, in my opinion, theorists have it easier because they don't have to deal with the experiment. They don't have to deal with the equipment breaking down. I feel theory is easier, but maybe that's not necessarily true. Um, but so in physics, that you see that distinction of theorists and experimentalists, and that's a reflection of the fact that um, what you have seen in physics 4A, 4B, and 4C, it's very quantitative. Our theories are very detailed. Um, like, you would see this in chemistry, even in chemistry all the time. You see some exception to some rule of thumb you have been given, and um, that's just the hand wave. Well, that's just the way, I don't know, that's just the way rubidium is, or that's just the way that particular chemical behaves. It's hand waved in other branches of science often because most of those sciences are experiment based. And you were not aiming to have a very detailed theory that describes how the world ought to behave. And in physics, that is our goal, to have a very detailed mathematical theory for describing everything. So every single exception becomes a challenge to the overall framework. And um, it, so the goal in atomic physics is to um, come up with uh, some explanations how our laws are still correct, that um, nothing, there's nothing wrong. It's, it's a surprising phenomena. It can be explained with everything that we know. And the goal in particle physics is to come up with the situations where, well, our laws are indeed wrong, and here, this is the correct law. Um, you might have heard of, well, we'll talk about supersymmetry maybe at the end of the semester. Um, that's the, what a lot of people think is the next uh, physics beyond um, what's known as standard model. 